As you'll see, we were down at the court yesterday, um, making sure that this case against Martin McGuinness is moved on. Now, there, there is an attempt out there by the uh, government, or governments, and also uh, senior civil servants, and of course the intelligence service, to try and give the impression that nothing is actually going on, that Martin McGuinness has no writ served on him, and that uh, there's no court proceedings. Well, just so you're sure, I'll let you see the document. And if you look at this document here, you'll see that's the stamp of the court on it. You will see that there's the plaintiff, William Fraser, and you will see the defendant, which is Martin McGuinness. Now, I can't make that any clearer than what's on that document. Writ of summons, Queen's bench, and there is the official stamp on that as well, which was the 9th of March, 2010. The date on this here was yesterday's date, which was the 21st, I believe, of the 6th. So, if anybody's not sure or believes that this is just another farce, they obviously don't know us too well. Well, at long last today, we have finally got the road or onto the road of taking Martin McGuinness into court. Um, people said this wouldn't happen, but now here's the proof that it is happening. Martin McGuinness will be going to court, and Martin McGuinness will have to answer the questions of his terrorist background, especially numerous murders carried out in the London Derry area. Now, for too long, this man has got away with murder, and now he's trying to betray himself as some type of... Uh, some type of politician, I don't know what you would call him. He, uh, the only word I can think of is a hypocrite. But let's see how he fares out when he gets into court. For too long, Martin McGuinness has got away with terrorising and butchering our community, and now he thinks he can do the same through Stormont. Well, no longer, Mr McGuinness, you're going to be held accountable, and this is the start of it. We're taking you into the courtroom, somewhere you should have been 30 years ago, and before you leave it, you will regret the heartache that you've caused to the Ulster people over this last 30 odd years. We will hold you to account. If the powers to be can't do it and the politicians can't do it, the victims that you created will do it. You couldn't beat us with a bomb and the gun. You will not beat us with the propaganda because we will show you in the light that you are and that as a cold blooded murderer. And we intend to make sure that you're held accountable for that. We intend to push this as far as it can be taken. Because the people are sick to their back teeth of hundreds of millions of pounds being paid out on inquiries. While at the same time, the largest percentage of the people who suffered in this community were Unionist people and innocent Roman Catholics. They have never had one inquiry. We are sick of the Republican propaganda trying to demonise our security forces and we will not allow the terrorists to write the history of this country. So they want to talk about shootings, they want to talk about kidnappings, they want to talk about torture. Just yesterday when I was in Cross Glen, I see they have a poster up, Stop the Torture of our POWs. Now that's not 20 years ago. That's just been put up in the last few days. Stop the Torture of our POWs. That's how warped these people are. They actually, I think they actually believe their own propaganda. And we will make sure that the world does know the truth and does know that these are no freedom fighters and they're certainly no prisoners of war. Amen. The other thing I have to say about yesterday when uh, the people were standing outside, now the people who were outside uh, the court yesterday supporting what I was doing inside represented between them over 40, 40 odd mothers. But the police actually came over and started to do a head count. Now, I don't blame the individual policemen who were sent, but it was the boys with the boiler suits on them, the riot squad, who were basically sent over to people on crutches, uh, elderly uh, mothers and ones who had lost their husbands, to have ourselves a head count done outside the High Court in Belfast to see if there's more than six of us uh, in the one spot at the one time by a number of police officers in boiler suits. You know, it's becoming a Nazi state for the unionist population. Did they do a head count in the Guildhall? 
you know, do they do a head count and all these other gowns that is held by Republicans on the spur of the moment? I don't think so. And like I said again, I don't blame the policemen who were sent over to do it. I blame the individuals who sent them to do it. Basically, what they did, they came over to the families of people who have suffered. Some of them lost in three members of their family who served in the security forces. Well, certainly most of them losing... Well, actually, there was one fellow there who was a police officer who was still dressed in his wounds after 30 years. And they were going to take their names. How many names have they, take, have they taken from Republican causes? People who gather at, at rallies belonging to the IRA. People who stand in the middle of the road on the white line with our placards uh, on a regular basis in different towns throughout Northern Ireland. You see maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 of them lined up the middle of the road. Our people weren't standing on the middle of the road. They were standing at the gates of the courthouse. But still, the police were sent to them. We don't see too many police going to these people in the middle of the roads who are standing talking about the prisoners of war. People who are inside for drug, racketeering, you name it. Them scumbags have done it. But people can stand in the middle of the road and hold their placards up and nobody bothers with them.